Support for this episode is provided by Waterlocks. I've been using Waterlocks wood finish for more than 25 years. And Beloxygen. Beloxygen replaces the oxygen in the can with a heavier argon gas that will blanket and protect the leftover finish and keep it from skimming over and going bad. Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna to talk about wood, and more specifically, the five woods that I use most often in my shop. Most recently, I built a project out of walnut. Walnut is a beautiful wood. It's a nice wood to work with, and when you're working with it, it has kind of a, a purplish gray color, but once the finish hits the wood, you get this beautiful deep dark brown with beautiful grain patterns, and that's why so many woodworkers choose walnut for their fine woodworking projects. Two things to know about walnut. In my opinion, walnut is a hardwood, but it's not extremely hard. So I wouldn't choose walnut for a project like a kitchen table that's going to take a lot of abuse over the years. Also, walnut is very susceptible to light, meaning it will fade or bleach out. So if you're gonna make a project that you know is going to be in direct sunlight, I would avoid using walnut. Next we have white oak. I really like white oak. I'm a big fan of white oak and not so much of red oak. Red oak kind of takes on a pink color that I'm not a big fan of, but white oak has this beautiful sort of honey brown color. And I often use quarter sawn white oak and that's where the log is cut into quarters as opposed to plain sawn and you'll get a beautiful flecking in the grain. So definitely a wood to keep on your radar. Maybe do a Google search on quarter sawn white oak. It's just, a, it's just a beautiful wood and I think a great choice for a number of projects, including the kitchen table, because it's a very dense wood and it will hold up to a lot of abuse. Another nice thing about white oak is it's very stable in sunlight. So if I'm going to build a project that I know is going to be in direct sunlight, my first choice is always white oak. White oak often has sapwood if you choose the right boards. The sapwood is the wood closest to the bark. And one of the design elements that I like to bring into my furniture builds is trying to join the boards at the sapwood. And that kind of makes the join line disappear because the sapwood line is so much more obvious. So that's just one of those things when you're in the lumber yard picking your lumber, definitely take your time, line the boards up, and, uh, and, and think about things like uh, quarter sawn, sapwood, and how you can use those variations in the grain patterns in your furniture designs. Cherry is another good choice for your fine furniture builds. It's a really nice wood to work with. And it has a nice smell when you're working on it. The, the shop takes on a, a pretty nice kind of cherry wood smell. The wood over time becomes a, a dark reddish brown color. So that's a, a very appealing thing about cherry. And that's why so many woodworkers uh, gravitate towards cherry wood for their fine furniture builds. And cherry is another wood where I will often incorporate the sapwood into the furniture design. So my kitchen table is made out of cherry and the boards are joined at the sap line on uh, two of the boards. So there are two big sap lines running through the middle of the table. I think it's a nice look uh, if you were to make say a sofa table and you had a long tabletop that was maybe 16 inches by 60 inches and you could join the two boards at the sap line and have that long line of sap wood running down the middle of the table. I think that is kind of a nice design element. It's just uh, something to keep in mind, always thinking about the, the wood grain, the color and uh, the differences in the boards while you're designing your pieces of furniture. One thing about cherry is it's hard to find long boards. So if you show up at the lumber yard and there's only four or five boards in there, chances are they're not gonna be good. I like to pick the lumber when there's a good stack where I can really take my time, go through the boards and get the boards that I want for the project because it's really important to understand that your woodworking project starts the moment you start picking your lumber. 
Next we have Sapili. And Sapili is a beautiful wood. It's kind of become the substitute for mahogany. It has a very uniform grain. It's a beautiful grain, but definitely very uniform. So maybe not as interesting at times uh, as, as something like white oak or, or walnut, but that really depends on, on your taste or what you like. It's very easy to grain match Sapili because the grain is so uniform. So often when I'm picking boards for Sapili, say I'm making a, a countertop or a tabletop, I'll pull the boards out of the rack and then line them up against the wall and kind of just shuffle them around until I get the, the best grain match. I should also mention that I buy almost all of my lumber S4S, which stands for surfaced on four sides. And I do that because I have a small shop here and I don't have a thickness planer, and I don't have a ton of room in front or behind my joiner to put a, a straight edge on it. So for me, it's worth the extra cost to spend a little money and buy the material S4S. So Sapili is definitely a great choice for your fine furniture builds. It does have a uniform look, so that may be something you like or maybe something you don't like. It's really up to you. It's also a great choice for exterior projects. So if you're going to build a piece of furniture that's going to go outside, Sapili is a great choice. A countertop that's going to go outside or even something that's painted that's going to go outside, Sapili is a good choice. I know a lot of people hate to hear the idea of painting something like Sapili, but I know a lot of professional woodworkers who do just because it really holds up well to the weather. For painted projects, I like to use poplar. Poplar's relatively inexpensive and readily available. You'll be able to find poplar at any lumber yard or home store. Poplar is in the hardwood family and it has a nice tight grain, so it's great for painting. I've used poplar for painted projects and trim work. It's great for baseboard moldings, casings, and chair rails. And the nice thing about poplar is it's virtually uh, not free. So if you were to ever look at a poplar tree in the forest, you'll see a, a long trunk, maybe 50 or 60 feet before you even see a branch. And that's because a poplar tree sheds its branches as it grows and you're left with these uh, beautiful boards without any knots or imperfections. So you'll be able to get wide boards and you'll be able to get very long boards. So that's the fifth board. Let's go ahead, put a little finish on these boards and see what they look like. The finish I'm using is Waterlox. Waterlox has been my go-to finish for fine furniture for more than 25 years. To keep the water locks from going bad while in storage, I'm using Biloxygen. I'll spray the Biloxygen into the can and the heavier argon gas will replace the oxygen that's in the can and keep the finish from going bad. So I'm going to spray it for two seconds. 1001, 1002. And now that finish will be good next time I need it. Okay, so these are the five woods that I use most often, and those are some of the reasons why. Of course, I do use other wood species from time to time, and most recently I've become very interested in using reclaimed wood, but uh, I thought that these five woods was a good place to start. So I hope that you found this video helpful, and if you did, please hit that like button and leave a comment. That really helps me out. If you wanna know what's going on kind of behind the scenes of the channel, how I come up with projects, how I work with sponsors and the different ways that YouTube has changed over the years, definitely check out my second channel, Shop Talk. I'll have a link in the description. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.